as scientists and engineers, we've been designing and building robotic arms for years. We use them to do repetitive tasks or work in dangerous environments. We're now also using them in warehouses, industrial complexes, and also to do medical procedures. In this classroom experiment, we'll be testing the students' ability to problem solve, but also looking at the intersect between science and engineering. Can you tell me what experiment we're going to be doing today? So the students are going to be tasked with building a robotic arm. Uh, it's a really simple experiment with some really simple equipment. Um, the idea is that they're going to design it and then build it and they're going to have to try and pick up a, uh, a ping pong ball. Um, and once they've done that, they're going to be given some more equipment to improve their design and then they're going to look at picking up various other objects. Okay, so what sort of equipment do you need? Really basic equipment that you can get quite cheaply. Plenty of lollipop sticks. You can buy them really cheaply in big packs um, with some holes punched in. Yes, I see the holes. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Um, and then loads and loads of these split pins. You can buy a couple, uh, probably about two to four hundred, just really cheaply, and we use them to fasten the lollipop sticks together. Um, and then it's useful to have some loom bands or some elastic bands as well. So on the ends of the arms, we need something that can be used to pick up the object. Some sponge or some foam. Um, or some rubbers. I suppose that gives a bit of friction. Yeah, yeah. Now to test the actual um, arm, you can a range of objects. So here we've got something that's got quite uh, a large volume, but it's quite light. So a bottle's nice for that. Um, we've got some perspex. Uh, so it's quite light really, but it's quite a large object. Different size corks, which are light again. The ping pong ball, again, it's difficult to pick up. It's round and quite light. And then it goes for something that's quite heavy and a regular shape. It's a nice piece of rock there. Yeah, as I like well. the challenge there, the rock. <laughs> yeah. And then finally for the students, we used an egg to yeah. challenge them to see if they could pick it up without obviously damaging it or breaking it. Yes. So that is quite a range of things to, yeah. to, to tackle, really. Especially we made out of lolly sticks. <laughs> yeah. So are there any handy hints that you've picked up from doing this experiment? Yes. So originally the plan was to get the students to punch their own holes. Uh, but the first time we, re we did that, we realised that takes a long, long time. Um, and also the holes weren't perhaps equal uh, in distance from each other. They were too near the edge, so the loyalty sticks were breaking when they were doing that. So we managed to make this little contraption. It's, <laughs> it's not <a> prototype. <laughs> yeah, prototype. It's <laughs> yeah. definitely in the prototype stage. Um, so a good, strong hole punch. Uh, you have to sort of play around with this a little bit to get the right width spacer that you can just slide in there. And then we put a space on this end to stop it. And then your lolly stick would just slide in and across and you can just punch it through there. Yes. And you can mass produce them. It took my technician about an hour to do about <laughs> yes. 200. So. Yeah. so that gives you two holes, but there's an, a, a third one in the center. Ah, uh, the center hole. So originally I forgot to do them, but then I remembered. <laughs> so what we do is we literally mark on the space that's in there where halfway down the stick is and you can see it there and you can either just hold it in pop it down or you could put a blue tack in there and another spacer oh, right. um, so you get them all at the same distance and yeah. nice and uniform yes <laughs> yeah uh, quite labor intensive but you do it once and then um yes yeah because you can reuse use. them as many times as you, oh, as you, of as you want so are, are there any health and safety concerns with an experiment like this um so the pins can be quite sharp so students need to be warned about that especially when they're they're pushing through the sticks and if they're going to push them through the erasers or mm. push them through the, the foam oh right yeah so you've got the equipment, but how do you get the experiment started? So initially, we give them very little information apart from they have to build a robotic arm. We tell them what equipment they have, and we just set them off on task. Mm -hmm. um, circulate around the room then, you can see how well the students are getting on. And further into the lesson, if they need a little bit of support, I might start to share some diagrams with them that are going to help them along their way. Oh, I love that because it's giving them the sort of creativity to come up with their own yeah. designs and I guess you get a variety of designs that way. Yeah you do um, and that's a fantastic to see. Um, you see some students that have made designs that will not work <laughs> and then you see some students that will work straight away but that's the beauty of it. They can learn by their mistakes and they can improve on them. Yes and I suppose learn from each other's mistakes as well. Yes definitely you know they can look at other groups and they can say oh yeah well they did it that way would that work better? Oh, mm. um, so yeah, it's a really nice way of getting the students to think about what they're doing. Once the students have made their robotic arms, how do you go about testing them? So the first task is we give them a ping pong ball and they have to try and pick that ping pong ball up. 
Um, when they've managed to succeed in that, then they can take to these other objects and see if they can pick those up as well. And then finally, we get to test them with the egg, whether they can pick the egg up and keep it aloft without breaking it. What sort of skills do the students need to do this sort of project? Um, so teamwork is a big one. They need to work together on this. Um, and they also need problem solving skills. <laughs> This one's quite interesting. So how did you come up with this, uh, this criss-cross design? Um, I thought of a pair of scissors and how yeah. they were yeah. very... And then we extended it. I see you've got sort of some sponge and some rubber here. Yeah. Why yeah. have you gone for that for the end? It creates friction for the thing that you're trying to pick up. So I put a rubber band around one of the bars and then put it on the sponge. Could you do one of the sticks wrong or something? What you need to do is somehow make this longer, but so when you shut that, it still shuts that. We've got students that are putting rubber bands, so they, when they pick their object up and they let go, the bands open their scissors back up again. Okay, I've got people using levers and pulley systems over here. Really good ideas. It, it reminds me of the human body, really, because what you have is sort of the, the sticks represent the bones and then um, the elastic bands represent the muscles. And so not only can you sort of grip, but you can sort of relax as well. And, and I think in many designs in science, we often learn off nature because nature has sort of got it pretty much sussed. <laughs> what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you some more equipment and you're going to make Mark II. Because when you design and construct anything, no one ever gets it right 100% of the time, first time. You have to make something, that, how can I improve it? How can I make it better? And try again. Sometimes you don't make it better. Sometimes you have to go back to the first one you've made. I'm sideways. Oh, I quite like that. And so you've got sort of the sponges sort of holding the top and then the, and then the erasers underneath sort of gripping the ball. Sort of the double whammy. <laughs> You've used um, just the um, the erasers, um, uh, and that's giving you enough friction. So then other people were have finding that this surface area wasn't big enough, but for you, you seem to have uh, uh, sorted that out. I don't know how. The, spo <laughs> the sponges just don't work. Oh, I see. They're too like they're too soft to pick it up. It's now time to test our arms. So we're going to come up um, in groups and we're going to see which of these objects you can pick up. Excellent. Um, I like the fact for small fiddly things you were using sort of the top bits and then for sort of the, the larger objects, you were using sort of the air of a sponge. So you've got one design, but you've got sort of two, um, sort of two different pincer movements to be able to try things out. So I think that really helped. I like the way you did the perspex there because you came in from above and also um, the rubbers on the end sort of give you some more friction so you're able to pick it up that way. Very nice. There's one final test, okay? But this time, if you drop the object, there will be consequences because you are going to test whether you can pick up a raw egg. I'll say that's success. <laughs> I just wanted to reflect a little bit on the lesson and what we think went well with our robotic arms um, and what we think we could do to improve in the future. So the designs were very um, top heavy and I think that if we applied less weight to the ends we'd be able to properly use the arms to pick objects up. And especially when like we were picking up the heavier objects, I think we needed more. Many people needed more friction on the um, on the end bit to make it 
grip more tightly and pick it up higher. Looking at the different designs, um, you can sort of pick and mix almost. So that was a good bit over there, that, was, that worked over there, so what can we take from that design? And um, sort of I think that way we can sort of uh, expand our knowledge. As a scientist, we do a lot of that, scientists and engineers. We sort of look at designs that are already out there and try and incorporate the things that work into our designs. Are, are there any takeaway teaching points or sort of curriculum sort of a spin outs from this? Yes, so obviously the students are using levers and moments. Um, they need to be thinking about the forces that are applied to, to the object they're picking up and the forces they're applying to the arm itself. The friction between the object and the effectors they're using on the end, so either the rubbers or the foam or the sponge. Um, and you can talk about density with the size and the volume and the mass of the objects as well. I suppose this has a sort of a real world spin-offs because robotic arms are used all over the place. I mean, especially in space, uh, um, as of, uh, on the International Space Station and things like that. So um, uh, yeah, there's real world application here. Yeah, I mean, space is um, somewhere that students would probably think of initially about using robots and robotic arms. Um, they've seen it, they see it on the rover and things like that. But we get to discuss other places, other places where it's not safe for mankind to go. So for perhaps in the depths of the ocean or in incredibly hot environments or perhaps inside a nuclear reactor. All those places where it would be dangerous for us to go, but we can easily send a robot in. So um, are there other extensions you can do with this sort of experiment? Well, yeah, once they've done it in the lesson and they've come up with all these individual ideas, um, they've all seen everyone else's ideas, what works and what's not, what doesn't. So they could take that then into maybe uh, extracurricular activity into a science club where they actually, as a project, try and make an arm um, incorporating all the good ideas. This classroom experiment has been really good fun. I think the students really engage with the topic and many of them were surprised with how much they could achieve with very simple equipment. They are able to use their creativity to come up with designs that spanned both engineering and science. But what I liked most of all was their ability to pull ideas within their groups, but also across the classroom.